What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I'm going to be ranking the top vehicles in all of Cyberpunk 2077. Now there's a number of different factors contributing to this list. The main factor is going to be top speed. The handling does play a little bit of a factor, but honestly, this game's frame rates drop so bad on the base consoles that I wasn't really able to test out the handling in the city very much. The majority of the turns and stuff that you're going to see in this game is going to take place in the city. And honestly, anytime I was trying to go around the corners really fast, the frames would just drop so low that I wasn't able to get a good reading of just how well these vehicles handle. But because I wasn't able to get a good test on that, that's why I'm going off of top speed. And then another factor that comes into play is just how much these vehicles cost. I'm going off of the price tag that goes alongside the vehicle. Now, some of these vehicles you can get for free by doing side quests and stuff, but that's another topic for another video. So I'm basically just going to do a top seven because a lot of the vehicles in the game are very similar. They just have different model numbers and they're not that different from one another. So this is going to be a top seven list. So starting off this list at number seven, we have Johnny Silverhand's Porsche 911 Turbo. Now you get this vehicle for free by basically just completing the main story. And then at some point you will have a side mission where you get to help out Johnny. And if you help out Johnny and you complete his side mission, you will eventually unlock his vehicle. So this is a really good free vehicle. I mean, you can't beat free. From what I was able to test, it does take some turns pretty well, but unfortunately it does not have a very good top speed. Only Badland straight stretch, I was only able to get it up to 162 miles an hour, and that's going downhill. So compared to some of the other vehicles that are going to be on this list, 162 miles per hour just isn't going to cut it. I think it's a fairly decent vehicle in the game. I wish it went a little bit faster than what it does, but because it only goes 162, that is why I'm putting it at number seven. So up next at number six, we have the Turbo R740. Now you'll come across these throughout the city. There's a number of different variations of this vehicle, but this is the one that you can purchase for $129,000, so it's a bit pricey. It has a top speed of 177 miles per hour, so it is fast faster than Johnny's 911, but I think Johnny's vehicle does handle a little bit better than this one. But I gotta give this turbo R740 props because it does go 177 miles per hour, so it can get up there in speed. I think the interior looks pretty cool, so get some props for that. And if you've got some money to spend, I think this is a pretty good vehicle to get, and that's why I'm putting it at number six. So up next at number five, we have the Type 66 640. You can buy this bad boy for $58,000. As you can tell, it's got the Dukes of Hazard look to it. It's got the number one on the side and it's got the flag up on the top. And overall, this thing's pretty good. I really enjoyed driving this vehicle. From what I could tell, it did handle pretty well. I was able to clock it at 185 miles per hour, which is faster than both of the previous cars. And you can't beat that price tag of $58,000. This is a really good all around vehicle if you're looking to make that upgrade early on. And you want a fairly decent fast vehicle that's not completely breaking the bank. I mean, at close to $60,000, that's not really make or break. And you do get a good looking vehicle and it is just really fun to drive. I really enjoyed this thing. And I honestly think it's worth it, I think it's a good one to add to the collection if you guys like to collect vehicles. So I think it's at a good spot at number five. So up next at number four, we have the most expensive vehicle in the game, which is the Rayfield Arendite. It clocks at 190 miles per hour. So, so far on this list, this is the fastest vehicle, but honestly, it should be at that price tag of $225,000. If you're wanting to save up to get this thing, it's going to take you a lot of grinding to be able to unlock this car. Honestly, most of you guys will probably never even get the chance to use this car. This is the vehicle you want to get if you basically just want to flaunt your money. You're not going to see any of these driving around Night City, these are extremely rare. I think I remember they said that there was only like four of these in Night City or four of these in total. I don't remember what the lore is behind it, but it's extremely rare. It handles okay, but to me it feels kind of like a limousine, like it's kind of long, feels kind of clunky. It definitely doesn't handle as well as some of the other vehicles in my opinion, but it does have that 190 miles per hour going for it, so it can go pretty quick. When the game actually decides to load itself and you don't have to worry about losing frames, this is a good way to travel from point A to point B. Overall, I just had a lot of fun driving this thing. I really like the interior of it. I think it looks really cool. It definitely looks really classy, but it is kind of hard to see 
in first person mode. If you're gonna drive this thing, I would stick to third person because you can't really see the road because the dash is just so high up. But I do think it's a really cool looking vehicle. But even though it is the most expensive, it is not the best. And that's why I'm putting it at number four. So coming in at number three, I decided to go with a motorcycle. Now there's multiple motorcycles that you can get in the game. But for this list, I decided to go with the one that you can purchase. You can buy it for $138,000, so it is a bit pricey. I was able to clock it at 179 miles per hour going downhill, so it's not as fast as the Arendite or the Type 66, but the reason I'm including this is because of the handling and the fact that you can fit motorcycles in small spaces. Motorcycles are one of the best ways to travel around the map because you can drive it down back alleyways, you can fit in spaces that you can't normally take a vehicle, you can go up and down stairs with it, you can take turns really well compared to some of the other vehicles, especially the big clunky ones and I think having a motorcycle is one of the best ways to travel around Night City. I think it's going to make life a lot easier and if you haven't already unlocked a motorcycle by doing some sort of side quest or whatever and you've got some money to spend I highly recommend the Nazir Racer. I think it's pretty good and that's why I'm putting it at number three. So up next at number two, we have the Xion Coyote. Now this is one of my favorite looking vehicles in the game. I really like how it has that kind of Badlands look to it. It's kind of like a street racer. It looks big and bulky, like it can take a lot of damage. But this thing can actually go 199 miles per hour. So this surprised me. I was not expecting it to go that fast. I was hoping that it would pass the 200 marks. I tried multiple attempts to get it to go over 200 miles per hour, but I just could never get it. It always stopped at 199. This thing handles really well in the Badlands area. It can go in dirt and stuff really well. Overall, this vehicle is really, really good. It's only $115,000, so it's not that expensive compared to some of these other vehicles and hey you can't go wrong with this one it looks cool it goes fast it handles well and it's just a really good vehicle to have I highly highly recommend this thing and that's why it is at number two so coming in at number one you might have been able to guess this but it's the Rayfield Caliburn so this is cyberpunk's version of like a supercar just based off of the looks alone, you can tell that this vehicle is going to go really fast. I clocked it at 211 miles per hour, so it can really get up there. This is the fastest vehicle in the entire game. It looks cool. It goes really fast. It handles really well. The interior looks really good. I like driving it in first person because I can actually see where I'm going when I'm driving this car. It has really cool interior. Everything about this car is really, really cool. It is a little bit pricey at $157,000 though. I mean, it's not as much as the Arendite at $225,000. I actually have a version of this car that I got for free that you can unlock just by doing side missions and stuff. So there is a free version of this car. And if you're able to get your hands onto a free version of this car, it's a complete steal. I think it's the best overall vehicle in the entire game. It's an absolute blast to drive. I think everybody's going to enjoy driving around Night City in this vehicle. And that's why I'm putting it at number one. So that is going to do it for my list of the top vehicles in Cyberpunk 2077. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Are there any vehicles that you guys would put onto your top 10 list? Obviously everybody's opinion is going to be different here. I'm sure my opinion might have changed a little bit if I was able to test out the handling a little bit better than what I could. Maybe if I eventually make the upgrade to Cyberpunk on PC, I'll test them out again and then maybe I'll have a different list here in the future. But that is going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. That way you guys don't miss out on any future videos. And that's going to do it for me, guys. And I will talk to you all in the next video.